Happy Friday, everyone, and welcome to the Rotary Club of Fort Worth. And what a beautiful day we have. Love the weather. We're going to begin our program with the invocation led by Chris Jordan, Foundings Steward Electron Electroacoustics Incorporated. Yikes, yeah, easy for you to say. Followed by a beautiful rendition of our national anthem performed a cappella by John Wright. So uh, I brought a book. This is called Every Moment Holy, and it's a book of everyday liturgies. There's a liturgy for beekeeping. There's a liturgy for your morning coffee. Uh, there's a liturgy for everything. So I selected one today for uh, a liturgy for serving others, and I'm just going to read part of it. Um, in serving you, I am freed from my need for the praise of others so that even if my kindnesses are shed from scarred hearts as rain from a sloped tin roof, my joy will not be dimmed. For I will know that you have received and remembered each act of sacrifice and reckoned it as a love rendered to you. So let love be sincere and let my service be fearless. I cannot know the end of another person's story. Our lives so often only briefly intersect. So let me be content to minister regardless of visible outcomes, trusting that the small mercies I extend will be woven into the larger theme of redemption at work in the lives of others as you woo them to yourself, drawing their hearts by graces offered and shaping my own heart too. In this process of learning to serve well, and by learning to serve well, learning to love well. Amen. Amen. Uh, thank you, President uh, Rebecca. I was not aware that I volunteered to do this acapella. I thought I was just giving you a starting note, which is what I'm going to do. Starting note. The starting note. Starting note. We got 500 people here. She wants to do this. What two minutes ago? So right. Thank you. So uh, the first couple notes. If it sounds a little bit like I was, I just can't help it. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and through the perilous fight, o'er the ramparts we watch, were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still say does that star-spangled banner yet wave for oh, the land of the free and the home of the brave thank you chris and thank you john now, please help me welcome Ms. Meredith Holler, Associate Corporate Gift Officer with Cook Children's Health Foundation, to welcome our visitors. Good afternoon. We'd like to um, welcome today um, Tony Estrada, who is the guest of Samantha Renz. Stephanie Adams, who is the guest of Mac, uh, of Mac Kimball. <laughs> Forgive me if I don't pronounce this right, but Stacy Gillian Bridges and Ray Casas, who's the guest of Rosie Verdeja. 
got a, got a long list here. Kevin Pellegrino, who is the guest of Perry Pillow. Steve Aguilar, the guest of Zoran Luttrell. Sean Ferkey, guest of Judy Youngs. Gravis Brown, guest of Mark Nurden. Okay. Shane Smith, the guest of past president Andy Taft. Okay. Twyanette Solomon, guest of Michael Brown. And lastly, we have Carl Hart, guest of past president Courtney Lewis. Thank you, Merida. Obviously, we have a very popular program today. Now join me in reciting our four-way test. First. Second. The fair to all concern. Third. And fourth. Will it be beneficial to all concerned? Okay, everyone, it's that time. Please welcome your newscaster, John Fletcher, President and CEO, Fletcher Consulting PR. Just keep it coming. Thanks so much. Uh, good Friday afternoon. Today is National Read a Book Day and also National Procrastination Day, so you can read that book tomorrow if you prefer. In the world of politics, no, we can't do that one. <laughs> Hold on. In the nation's capital, can't do that one either. Uh, anyway, a little bit of censoring. Uh, in space, though, we can do this one. The two astronauts are still marooned on the International Space Station. They were promised they could return as soon as the Dallas Cowboys win the Super Bowl. <laughs> They might be there for a while, the, but it might be better off calling for the Gilligan's Island crew. Things can get hectic around political conventions. At the recent Democratic National Convention, a man who thought he was standing in line for a food truck at lunchtime ended up getting a vasectomy instead of a hot dog with relish. In an unconfirmed political news, the CEO of the furniture store, IKEA, was just elected president of Sweden. He should have put his cabinet together by the end of the week. And a 1,000-pound sister's reality TV show, 500-pound co-star was arrested in Tennessee for possession of drugs. Apparently, Ozempic was not involved. <laughs> in, in celebrity news, French film icon, I believe his name is pronounced Alain de Delon, uh, wanted to uh, have his beloved sheepdog, uh, Lubo, buried with him. Unfortunately, Lubo was not in on the idea, and so he was spared the funeral, and he got to see it from above ground. And well, it's finally here what red-blooded sports fans have been waiting for all year long, the annual blackout of college and football sports on ABC and ESPN as they continue their negotiations with DirecTV. Tomorrow we're going to miss the anticipated classic battle of collegiate heavy heavyweights as Alcorn State takes on Vanderbilt. And on Sunday, our own Dallas Wild Boys travel to Cleveland, but that's going to be on Fox, so you can watch it. The Star-Telegram's Mac Engel reports that Jerry Jones is the victim of physics. Uh, Mac quoted the late genius Albert Einstein, uh, who famously said the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and again and expecting different results. So as long as Jerry's there, well, you know the rest. Tom Brady's practice game broadcast reviews are in. They said he's smooth, but he still needs three more concussions before he's as funny as Terry Bradshaw. <laughs> and last night launched the official start of the NFL season, well, what the fans called the Taylor Swift season. For the second year in a row, she has given permission to her boyfriend, Travis Kelsey, to play football and kiss her after the game. Her new contract with the NFL allows for four minutes of actual football being shown in each half between cutaways for Taylor and the luxury suite. The Chiefs did win 27 to 20 over Baltimore, and this is for real. She has been drawing up plays for the Chiefs and is waiting for her plays to actually happen. Meanwhile, Jerry Jones has fired four marketing executives for not offering up one of his players to be Terry's boyfriend, or Taylor's boyfriend. In baseball news, the Chicago White Sox have won only four 
four games since the All-Star break. And they're on track to lose the most games ever in a season, breaking the record from the New York Mets. But it's not all bad news. For the final three weeks of the season, White Sox batters can use a Little League batting tee instead of facing a real pitcher. And they're also asking to load the bases every single inning to see if that'll help them score. In more bad news, the White Sox have already been mathematically eliminated for each of the next 17 Major League Baseball seasons. <laughs> and more bad news for the Midwest. In a crushing blow to one of America's great cities, the 2036 Olympics turned down Akron, Ohio. We thought we had it in the bag, said the mayor. Our YMCA has four swim lanes. Our county fairgrounds would have been perfect for the goat roping and the wild cow milking. In crazy headlines, a woman accidentally joins a party, search, a search party looking for herself, and a Florida couple was arrested for selling tickets to heaven. There was a typo in a local newspaper, and it said, due to a typing error, Saturday's story on local artist John Hinninger mistakenly reported that his band made Eric Lyde was said that he was on drugs. The story should have read he was on drums. There's a difference. In work humor, a young man sat in an interview with two senior leaders for an IT position. One of the grumpy old men asked, what makes you suitable for this job? To which he said, I hacked your computer and invited myself for this interview. He got the job. And sign of the week, you know you, that when you buy a bag of salad, it gets all brown and soggy. Well, cookies don't do that to you. Uh, the forecast calls for a high of 89 today and highs in the low to mid 80s for the next 10 days. So get out your sweaters. And in college football, TCU is picked to finish around seventh in this year's newly expanded Big 12 with 14 teams, so 12, 14, whatever. While last year's season was to point, disappointing, just remember the last time they were picked seventh, they played for the national championship just two years ago. And speak of our Horned Frogs, they're hoping to avoid an upset tomorrow as they take on one of the, one of the top ranked teams on Long Island. Yes, the, the Long Island Sharks, the same team that lost last weekend in a classic to Albany. In a betting first, the Frogs are, let me get this right, a zillion point favorite. So place your bets. And that's Rotary News. Thank you, John. All right, everyone, now it's time for some announcements. We have a few. First up is going to be John Wright with Simple Leadership Strategies with an update on our social committee. It's going to be some fun social outing for all of our members, followed by Abby Dudek with Strategic Communications Manager, pardon me, with Tarrant County 911 District, who has an interactive volunteer opportunity soon to make an impact on our community. Followed by Shanna Saldana, Chief of Staff Effectus Group with an international committee opportunity. Thank you all and please join us. Thank you, President Rebecca. This is my, I'm up here twice. This morning I, I didn't know I was gonna be up here at all. So for all of those who have parts, if anybody doesn't show up, I'm your guy, okay. Social Committee News. Million Dollar Quartet tells the true story of the famed recording session that brought together rock and roll icons, Elvis Presley, Johnny Cash, Jerry Lee Lewis, and Carl Perkins. See that fateful December night in Memphis come to life when an irresistible tale of personal and professional struggles, promises, secrets, and betrayals and celebrations at the start of these legends' career. This is this Wednesday night at 11, uh, the 11th, 6 p.m. There's only a few tickets left, so if you want to be a part of that, you need to scan that. Uh, thank you very much. What does it say? 7.30. Thank you. Do you like the outdoors? Do you like to hang out with your rotary friends? Do you need some more vitamin D in your life? If you've answered yes to any of these and you qualify to participate in our free trash bash you know, activity that we're doing, you can scan that QR code. I worked real hard to even put our rotary thing in the center of the QR code. Just say no to the dinosaur. So go ahead and scan that, sign up for it, meet with your rotary friends, and let's leave the, let's leave the Trinity River and trails a little bit cleaner than we found it. September 21st, 8 a.m. <laughs> Thank you. Hi. 
Note to self, don't be late when the garage is full. We were both <laughs> rushing, texting like, I'm five minutes, I'm two minutes. All right, so we are here on behalf of International Services and the Social Committee for a fun opportunity coming up on Tuesday, October 1st. We will be hosting a welcome kit supply drive benefiting World Relief at Hoppin on Weisenberger? I believe so. So <laughs> Hoppin's a new self-serve brewery. Um, so always excited to serve, um, support a new business. So we want everybody to come out, bring your household goods, sign up, invite friends, because we want to have more items than they can store. So follow the QR code on the pretty little flyer there. Thank you, Aurora. And you'll see the list of items and give you an opportunity to register. So we have a head count for snacks, maybe? Yes. All right. Hope to see you all there. Thank you. Thank you, John, Abby, and Shanna. Exciting, isn't it? Think about it. We have something for everyone. You know what to do? Bring your friends, bring your family. And there may be some potential new Rotarians joining us. There's time to sign up. You know what to do? There's a QR code. Take a pic, click, or click on the QR codes. Now a drum roll, please. We have two new member introductions. First up, proposer Karen Teshaw Johnson, followed by past president and area Dish assistant governor Sean Snell, each introducing our new members. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Josh Strange, and he's not. It's not strange. <laughs> he did move here from Missouri seven years ago, and Josh worked on airplanes at Boeing, and then went to work on airplanes at Lockheed Martin, and in particular, the F-35. Having an entrepreneurial spirit, more than two years ago now, right? Yeah. Josh left the world of working on aircraft and started his own company, Stellar Painting. So Josh and I met at the Cowtown Executives Association, so small business owners get together, meet each other, and it's an incredible group, and he's been a great, uh, great member of that group as well. But Stellar Painting itself is a local Fort Worth painting contracting company, and Josh strives to be the most trusted painting contractor in the city, so he's your guy. Married to his beautiful bride, Alexander, they have two boys. He's a parent of toddlers, <laughs> Oliver and Noah, who are three and one. But now he spends his days building his family, building his business, and building his community. So please welcome to the Fort Worth Rotary, Josh Strange. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the lovely introduction, Karen. I should have expected I would get a strange joke. Uh, in my entire life, <laughs> uh, heard them all. So if you if you think you're clever and you've thought of one that I haven't heard, you I haven't. <laughs> so uh, I'm very very thankful and honored to be here. Um, I am you know the the reputation of Rotary is is very apparent and uh, very thankful about it. And um, I am a new Rotarian. I've never. Uh, you know, I've never been part of Rotary, don't have any family in Rotary, but uh, what I've heard about it and the amazing people I've met so far, very excited for the opportunity and uh, the opportunity to serve and uh, grow uh, my young family, my young business, uh, and my leadership skills, and I think this is the place to do it. So thank you guys. everyone, it is my pleasure to reintroduce Carol Kibbers. Some of you may remember Carol. She was here for a few years, roughly from 2019 to 2022, uh, and we're delighted to have her back. She is originally from Houston. She's an Aggie, and she also got an MBA at University of Dallas. She's a human resources professional. Uh, she started with Taylor Construction and what I think originally may have brought her to Fort Worth, that first time around she was with Acme Brick. Then we lost her, she went back to Hath over in Dallas, but she's back and she's with Ben E. Keith now and there's a fun aspect to that. 
Some of you may know I'm a bit of a club history buff. Well, Ben E. Keith was one of the first members of our club. And not only that, he was a very esteemed member. Neva assures me that he, was, he's, he joined in 1915 and he was here for 44 years until he died in 1959. And when I would look back at old history things, it was always Ben Keith who was leading every fundraiser for many, many years. So all that to say, we've got a double win. We've got Carol and we've got the namesake representing the namesake for Benny Keith. And she's got a few other details under wraps. She's gonna tell you more. Thank you, Sean, and my introduction is called, I Wonder. I wonder why we get speeding tickets in North Texas when I think we should get speeding trophies. <laughs> and by the way, that's me when I used to ride rodeo as a teenager in Houston. I wonder why Fort Worth Club has 87.2% of its parking spots designated as small car only, <laughs> when approximately three people in Fort Worth have small cars. <laughs> and I think the problem could be solved by everyone riding scooters, and that's me and my scooter, it's my favorite mode of transportation. <laughs> I wonder why I'm so blessed to have two human babies, that's Sarah and PJ. <laughs> and two canine babies, that's Shelby Marie and Lulu. <laughs> and now to work for a company that truly cares about its employees and its customers. I can't tell you I am so blessed to work for Benny Keith. I wonder why 1.2 million people worldwide work to promote peace and polio, provide clean water, support education, save mothers and children, protect the environment, respond to disasters, and why 300 of them meet every week here in Fort Worth, setting aside our differences with a mantra of service before self with all of these subgroups from community outreach all the way down to social. Why? Because we are Rotarians and members of the mighty Rotary Club of Fort Worth. And I'm honored to rejoin. Thank you. Karen, and thank you, Sean. That's exciting when we have new members. Okay, guess what we have now? We have a new Blue Badger. He has completed his six acts of service. John Burke, John Burke, where are you? Here he is. Step right up, John. I'll be taking your red badge. Can hold this no, just take and um, come up All right, John, what was your favorite act of service? Greeting people. Awesome, awesome. And then I understand that you and your three sons will be participating in the Trash Bash. That is correct. Can you share anything about this famous threesome? Oh, they're uh, 11, 10, and 7, so they'll be pretty young. 
but uh, want to teach them hard work and service. So should we be on our toes for this? Are they going to? Are they competitive? Will they have a little competition? Maybe who can find the most interesting item? That uh, usually happens during trash bash. They will probably be fighting amongst themselves. <laughs> well, good luck. <laughs> and you. the rest of us that are with you on that, it'll be fun. Thank okay. you. Welcome. We appreciate you. Okay, everyone, regarding our red badgers, and they do such a good job, we have a quick red badger, as we're calling it today, announcement. We'd like to welcome Mr. Mark. Come on up. Last week, I, when I was recruiting the Red Badgers for their acts of service to complete six of them, I was hacking out an email and the subject line it said, Red Badgers. And I thought, what a great name for our mascots. <laughs> so there's Red Badgers. So in my attempt to recruit the Red Badgers, I thought I'd get these guys a t-shirt. And this, this week, the Red Badger of the week is Zorin. And he's taking tonight's, today's notes. So, So that'll be a fun. And thank you for each of you that do take our notes e each week. I don't think you receive the attention. You probably should. And it does take time, so thank you all. And you see what will be happening now with our mascot, the Red Badgers. <laughs> thank you, Mark and Zorin. Now it is my pleasure to introduce our chairperson of the day, past president, Fernando Costa. Yeah. Assistant City Manager, but not for long, yeah. <laughs> with the City of Fort Worth. Welcome, Fernando. Thank you. Thank you, President Rebecca. In 1981, when the Bass family hired Rotarian Ken Devereaux to start downtown Fort Worth, Inc., the core of our city was economically dormant. Some of you will remember those times. Today, of course, our downtown is bustling with activity and major improvements are underway. Much of the credit goes to Ken Devereaux and also to Andy Taft, who succeeded Ken as downtown Fourth Inc. president in 2003. Andy, as you know, is a past president of our club, has served our community in countless ways, and is recognized across the globe as a past chair of the International Downtown Association. We're delighted that Andy is here to bring us an update on what's happening and what will be happening soon in downtown Fort Worth. Please welcome our friend, past president, Andy Taft. Thank you, Fernando. Josh, in these political days, it's much better to be strange than weird. <laughs> Have you heard that one? <laughs> he has not. <laughs> Thank you. Now on to more serious matters. <laughs> Downtown really is on a roll. Fernando, thank you for that introduction. Really is on a roll. And uh, as I was looking at the lineup of speakers for this year, it occurred to me that there's so much going on in so many different parts and so many different ways. And so many people are talking about so many different dynamics that are in play in downtown that I volunteered to, uh, to speak if there was ever a, a hole in the schedule. And fortunately, uh, the speaker for today couldn't show up. And so I was asked a couple of weeks ago to speak. And I jumped on the opportunity because there is, there is so much going on that I thought this group in particular uh, are, are good um, stewards of information 
and, uh, and our good salespeople. And if there's anything that we could use right now in so many different ways, it's more people talking and understanding what is going on in downtown in particular and how it affects the, how it affects the rest of the community. So this is a 2024 update. The pictures of construction that you see here will, uh, were taken yesterday, so they're as up-to-date as possible. Just a quick bit about downtown Fort Worth, Inc. We're a private nonprofit uh, advocacy organization dedicated to the advancement of downtown, and we we um, we use a number of different strategies and tactics to uh, to do that, including managing the public improvement district, the tax increment financing district. We produce the Main Street Fort Worth Arts Festival and the Parade of Lights. Uh, we do the main table down Main Street. Um, Becky Fetty from my staff and Shane Smith is on my staff are here. <clears throat> We manage a couple of city parks. Uh, we do a lot of events, uh, marketing, do a lot of marketing and a lot of research. So a lot of the information that you see in the Star-Telegram, including today on the front page above the fold, uh, came out of our research division and Shane is our, is our researcher. So that's who we are. We're a membership organization dedicated to the advancement of downtown and we're the city's private sector partner in, in all things downtown. One of the things that you might not know about us is that our organization manages the public improvement district and the people that you see out on the street dressed in these uniforms uh, are on our staff cleaning up uh, being hospitality uh, providing hospitality services and if something needs to be chopped up mowed swept up weed eated uh, if there is an infestation of black birds from the north that come to Fort Worth, Texas <laughs> twice a year, we, uh, we get rid of them. And in fact, our grackle population in downtown is down 95% from its high. Thank you. Josh, that's a weird statistic that you can quote. <laughs> One of the, one of the uh, things that, as you're listening to this presentation, one of the things that you need to remember is that downtown doesn't operate in a vacuum. And when you look at this graphic here, you recognize that there are a lot of areas around town that over the last 15 years or so have really started to come on strong. Uh, the, the, the near south side, the hospital district, it's not just for hospitals anymore. Uh, the, the west side uh, along 7th Street and now moving down Camp Bowie, uh, that urban core of Fort Worth is starting to explode. Uh, just east of downtown, we're seeing a lot of multifamily development happening in a part of Fort Worth that hasn't seen a lot of activity in decades. And of course, the uh, Panther Island and the stockyards are, are really coming on strong. And over the next couple of decades, Decades, the area between downtown and the stockyards uh, will completely change the definition of Fort Worth, Texas when it comes to our worldwide reputation and our position in the Metroplex. Fort Worth, if there's one thing Fort Worth needs to do more of, it's step out of the deep shadow of Dallas uh, that is cast by Dallas. The D in DFW is very large. And, and we need to step out. And of all the things that are going on in Fort Worth, I think the Panther Island story is the one that's gonna capture the attention of the world. And, uh, and so the things that happen around downtown are important to downtown, and the things that happen in downtown are important to the, uh, to the broader uh, urban core of the city. And when Downtown Fort Worth Inc. was founded, it was founded on the idea that the core needs to be strong for the rest of, uh, the core of downtown needs to be strong, and and if it doesn't become strong, the urban areas around downtown are always going to suffer. And I think that now after 42 years of existence, the, the seeds that were planted all those years ago are starting to bear fruit. And the urban core of Fort Worth is roaring back. And now I'm going to dial into, uh, into what's going on in downtown in the, in the uh, major land uses. The development pipeline for downtown Fort Worth this is downtown Fort Worth. We are track, tracking $3.4 billion worth of development activity in the core of downtown. And for those of you in sales, you know the pipeline is one thing and then the things that actually happen are another, but you want a big pipeline of prospects and activity and developers that are interested and customers that are, that are interested in buying your product. $3.4 billion in all of these categories is a remarkable investment in your center city when the definition of the center city for decades had been disinvestment. 
when downtown was broken sidewalks, broken windows, no trees, people sleeping under your car. That is completely turned around. For downtown Fort Worth uh, is one of the, the prides of the nation. And this level of activity among those land uses is very impressive. Needless to say, we need to see more office interest. And again, climbing out of the shadow of Dallas will help that. Uh, but we're seeing an unprecedented amount of development activity, each one of which will create more interest in downtown and their various land use categories. So this is very impressive, and the, the crystal ball for the next five to seven years is fairly clear, uh, and we're excited, we're, we're excited to see what's gonna happen. Uh, again, uh, this graph, this chart, six months ago was 2.6 billion. So, a lot of lot of interest happening in downtown. There are a series of catalytic projects that we know are going to happen, and when you look at this chart, you can see that they are clustered uh, in the southeast quadrant of downtown around the convention center and Texas A&M. Uh, but yeah, well, yes. <laughs> By the way, that little thing, that little whoop, you're gonna be hearing that a lot more. <laughs> Uh, in, in, in Fort Worth's near future because right now the Texas A&M project is about a half a billion dollars worth of development and that's really just for the first two buildings. Uh, there is a lot more coming our way. And I'll, and I'll show you a slide that represents that in the not too distant future. Uh, on the office market, we'll just start with that. Again, I think that's probably our weakest link in, in Fort Worth generally. Uh, our corporate presence is not as high nearly as it is that, uh, that, our, that our population would suggest. Uh, but interestingly, the oil and gas collapse, as you can see, as leases started to roll after the oil and gas collapse, we saw a, a dip in the office occupancy in downtown. The red bar is COVID. And despite all the news headlines about office and people not coming back to work and all that kind of jazz, we've seen actually uh, a rather impressive increase in office occupancy in downtown. Now, in part, that's because some office buildings have been taken off the market. City Hall, for instance, has been taken off the market, so that changes the denominator and that increases <laughs> occupancy. But still, uh, a 90% office occupancy rate is very healthy. Uh, and so uh, that puts us that much closer to new office being built in downtown, having more cranes on the skyline, more people coming downtown. Uh, the back to work statistics from COVID, here you can see the pre-COVID level uh, in 2019, and about a 20% dip uh, uh, in, the, in, the, in the years that have passed. Um, and so we're, you know, we've lost about, on any given day, about 20% of the worker population in downtown. If you are a merchant or a restaurateur, you really feel that where it hurts. Um, the, again, the office market is a little more robust. They're restructuring the way offices are used. And so, uh, and so we need to do things that bring more people back to replace that 20% that we've lost. Needless to say, new office space will, will be good. Uh, Texas A&M will bring new people, but so too will new residential and new, uh, and new education offerings in downtown and, and new hotels. So uh, while the number of employees are down, we have these other land uses that are bolstering the supply of people with money in their pockets coming to downtown, and you'll see that in the upcoming slides. One of the really great things that's happening on the office side is, um, is City Hall. This is important not only because the, the people who do the work of the city deserve to have a decent place to work, uh, but this is our front door. When people and companies come to Fort Worth, Texas to do business with the city, uh, they are no longer going to a dark bunker. They are going to one of the finest office buildings in the Metroplex with great views of the Panther Island area, great views of downtown, and this is the kind of city hall that we all deserve and that represents Fort Worth well. By the way, that building in the front is the new city council chambers, which is a remarkable architectural statement, and when it's open, I think that's something that we're all going to be very, very proud of. Uh, on the hospitality side, this is a market that is truly in its ascendancy in Fort Worth. Uh, when I got here 20 years ago, the, uh, the, I would say with the exception of the Worthington, the uh, hotel inventory was dowdy. I, we're just going to use that term. <laughs> 
every one of, because of the Omni and because of the convention center expansion, every single hotel in downtown Fort Worth has been renovated and we've added a lot of hotels to the inventory. Uh, over a thousand hotels since the beginning of COVID, or hotel rooms since the beginning of COVID. Interestingly, on the hospitality side, this graph represents alcohol sales in, <laughs> those of you who are laughing and applauding, um, well, we know a little bit more about you than we did before. <laughs> the, the yellow line, the yellow line is, is downtown Fort Worth. And you, the, the beginning of the graph is kind of us coming out of COVID, right? About $8 million in alcohol sales. Uh, last year, almost $16 million. So a doubling of alcohol sales as we came out of COVID. The, the orange line is the stockyards, also kind of a doubling from about 6 million to 12 million. Interestingly, the West 7th uh, has, has seen a decline to kind of, kind of the post-COVID beginning. So uh, the, the West 7th area is, is still working through some issues, uh, but the good news is that the, the, the slope of that yellow line is very impressive. And, uh, and so the restaurants in downtown and the, and the bars in downtown and the hotels, that this is a good measure of people having fun in downtown. And, uh, and so we're happy to see the trajectory of that graph. Hotel occupancy rates are another really great example of the trajectory of your center city. And in this graph, you can see what COVID did. Very dramatic and sharp decline in occupancy of hotel rooms. And we are just about uh, even with the pre-COVID level, in spite of the fact that we've added a thousand rooms to downtown, right? This is a very telling graph. And so too is this one. You can see the, the COVID decline. This is the dip in the average daily rate of those rooms. And we are well above uh, the COVID level, about 25% uh, above the COVID levels. So a dramatic increase in the average daily rate, again, despite the adding another thousand rooms to the supply. Uh, the Sandman Hotel, very unfortunate incident uh, happened there. They are under construction and we hear uh, most lately that we think they will be reopened in the second quarter of next year. The Le Meridian just opened. This was closed for about 18 years. Uh, this is the uh, annex of the Hilton. Just reopened, if you haven't seen it, it they have done a spectacular job repositioning that building and, uh, and that, that will be a very successful uh, hotel right by the convention center. This is what the graph of hotel room growth looks like dating back from whatever that first year is there. 81, 1981. Uh, so you can see some stair steps and then the convention center gets expanded. The Omni is, uh, is added to the inventory. COVID hits and pre-COVID there was a lot of hotel activity that continued, the construction continued through COVID. So you see a, a very dramatic rise and then you see this big spike in hospitality and hotel room growth uh, in downtown leading up to about 2030 or so when the convention center is finished. This is an estimate on our part on what hotel gr growth looks like in downtown that might be a little bit flatter than that, but still with the addition of the new convention center hotel, the expansion that the Omni is talking about and a couple of other hotels that are kicking the tires in downtown, we see a further expansion of the hospitality market in downtown. Now, uh, hopefully all of those make, again, the pipeline is what's important uh, at this point as we project into the future, but every one of those hotel rooms represents people coming to Fort Worth from out of Fort Worth with money in their pocket and time on their hands, and they are gonna spend it in downtown, they're gonna spend it in the near south side, the Stockyards, Camp Bowie, and, and all the other places. This is very exciting. This graph is very exciting about the future of Fort Worth and the kind of amenities that these people who come to our city uh, are going to help generate for us as residents. Not only that, but they are going to be paying a lot of taxes. So this is money from outside the city. They're paying our taxes for us and they are going to their city. And if we are all doing our job right, they're going to go to their city and they are going to say, have you ever been to Fort Worth, Texas? And that hopefully will increase our reputation and expand the size of the font of FW in DFW. Um, the convention center 
uh, expansion is underway already. This is phase one, a very exciting project that again will bring a lot more people from out of town. And if you've driven down Commerce Street, you've probably seen this, si this, uh, um, this construction recently. Here's what's going on around the convention center. And I would just note that you can see the arena in the middle of the picture and you can see Commerce Street bowing out to the east of the convention center. Just as I flip to the next slide, see what happens here, right? Um, that bulge of the convention center that requires the, the bulge of the street goes away, and so we get this. Uh, the street gets straightened, Commerce Street gets straightened. It creates three new city blocks of land. That's where the new convention center headquarters is expected to um, be built. And uh, the arena goes away and the convention center gets expanded on its site. That's kind of the big vision for the convention center itself. But it's the area around it that captures the imagination and will probably be the locus of activity uh, in the near future. Here's what's going to happen. We've already seen a lot of residential development happen in that quadrant of downtown, and even more will likely occur on the blocks that you see there in, in blue. Um, quite a few of the hotels that have been built in the last five or six years have been clustered just kind of north of the convention center. And, and you can see how many of those new names are on there. Obviously, the new convention center hotel represents a real opportunity, the expansion of the Omni and, and a couple more. So the hospitality market is clustering around the convention center. Uh, again, largely because of the expansion and the success of the Omni and, and, and downtown's appeal as a place for tourists. Um, the uh, Texas A&M has the four blocks, we've all heard about the floor, four blocks that they control, uh, but the city has also made arrangements with them that if they want more property, there is property, especially along Lancaster where the interstate used to run, um, that is available. Uh, I'm very concerned that Robert Stearns has left the building. <laughs> but he was smiling when he did it, so I guess I'm okay. As soon as he's out of the door, I'm talking about the city. All right. By the way, Robert runs economic development for the city, and he's great. He heard that. Excellent. <laughs> So, not, so uh, the, the top Texas A&M logo that you see there, that's land that was owned by the Eamon Carter Foundation. That has been um, donated to Texas A&M. And there's some land there on the, on the bottom part of the picture as well. So it, they're not just landlocked to the four blocks. And, and so I would expect that between them and the University of Texas at Arlington, we are going to see a, an expansion of higher education in that quadrant of downtown that is going to change Fort Worth, and especially downtown Fort Worth, in ways that we probably can't predict right now. At a minimum, they will bring demand for more hotel rooms, they will bring more demand for hamburgers, and they will bring conventions to town, and they will undoubtedly bring um, office users to downtown, which will put pressure on the office market, which hopefully will result in higher rates and, and more construction in downtown. So as an economic development strategy, higher education has been in our 10-year strategic action plan for the last 30 years, and those seeds planted and advocated for over time are really starting to bear fruit. Housing is another one that we uh, we in the city have been working on for decades, trying to convince people that living in downtown was a viable option. And I can tell you that when I got here 20 years ago, Ken Devereaux told me, boy, we've got a bunch of residential coming in. 10 years ago, if anyone would have told you that somebody would live in downtown, they would have told you you're crazy. Well, we've got over 10,000 people living in downtown and quite a bit more on the way. Uh, up on Samuels, we've seen a lot of multifamily development occurring. This, this uh, property just opened up. The public market building is being renovated, and that renovation is due solely by the, uh, due to the economics of residential. There's over 200 units being built behind there, and that's funding the uh, renovation of the public market building. Uh, on Vickery, just south of the interstate, but worthy of note when you're talking about downtown, this industrial area is starting to convert into uh, multifamily residential, and uh, over 300 units are being built just south of, of downtown on Vickery. Uh, 
the former library site uh, is also going to be converted in all likelihood to significant residential towers with retail on the ground floor and probably an office component or probably or maybe an office component will be built there. Uh, this is going to be somewhere on the order of, I would imagine, a $500 million project. We don't have hard numbers on it yet, but the, the scale of it suggests something of that magnitude. Uh, and this is a very quiet section of downtown. So we're starting to see the walkable core of downtown expand with these very high density uses. Deco 969 just recently opened. This is the first major high rise, resident, strictly residential project uh, to be built in downtown in quite a long time. Uh, the average rent uh, in this uh, development is about $3 and we'll call it $3.50 a square foot per month. So if you've got a thousand square foot unit, uh, it's $3,500 a square foot per month in rent. If they lease up at the pace they say they're gonna lease up at that rate, uh, that's mortgage money. And we will start to see the condo developers coming back to Fort Worth and looking at, uh, looking at properties for for sale product. So this is kind of the bell cow in Fort Worth's residential future, and we hope that they are extraordinarily successful. Uh, there are a number of other products that have been designed and are in the works for downtown uh, on the residential side. And this is what the downtown multifamily growth chart looks like as far as we can see into the crystal ball. On the transportation side, the dash is being retired and is being repurposed uh, to, to run through downtown as the blue line. Uh, very soon, the orange line will run between downtown and the stockyards. Uh, Texrail is extending their service into the medical district. And this is what the Texrail ridership graph looks like uh, along its course. And you can see it is dramatically higher than even the pre-COVID level. And you can see the effect of COVID here. So this is the train that runs from downtown to the, to the airport. So people are starting to really use that commuter line. The TMP Passage is a project that Downtown Fort Worth Inc. is, uh, is building. This is a rendering of, of how we are gonna transform the gateway to the, the southern uh, transit stop in downtown uh, from having to cut through a hedge and through a parking lot and then to a building. Uh, we're gonna transform it into this. And in fact, if you drive down Lancaster right now, this is what you see. Uh, the big letters are up. The, the uh, illuminated pathway is in, and we'll probably have a grand opening in October to celebrate the opening of this new first and last impression into downtown. <laughs> On the education side, we've talked a little bit about it. This is the first Texas A&M building. It's under construction right now, and that's a very recent construction photo. This is what the second building might look like. It's about $260 million building, and the funding for design was approved by Texas A&M just a month or two ago. And, uh, and hopefully we'll see that, that project continue. The Young Women's Leadership Academy is the number one school in Fort Worth ISD, and we were successful in recruiting that in our last 10-year plan, as we also recruited the flagship STEM and Visual and Performing Arts Academy in Butler. So part of the strategy for downtown is to have education and higher education be a significant component. And again, those seeds that were planted years ago are really starting to bear fruit. Our next big project, and I will end with this. Madam President, you're just gonna stand for just a minute. <laughs> because if I am fortunate, I can burn the next seven minutes and there will be no time for the Sunday at Square question. <laughs> prepared for the Sundance Square question, don't get me wrong, I have an answer. But here's our next big project, I'm really excited, really excited to share with you what we're, what we're about to do. Uh, the yellow items in this chart show you the kind of the scope of, of what we're doing. Uh, but in front, uh, just to the north of the courthouse is Paddock Park. There's nothing in Paddock Park for human beings. Uh, there really isn't. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a very rare green space in downtown, completely unused by, by anyone, really. We're gonna transform the front of the courthouse from this to this. You may applaud. 
This is a re remarkable transformation of a green space that's unused, and, uh, and it's going to have water features, it's going to have lights, it's going to be beautiful at night. It, when you're coming home from the stockyards and you go through downtown, this is just going to be spectacular. It's going to set off the courthouse, it's going to elevate the prominence of the courthouse in the lives of our city, and it will give people a, a public place, I'm going to underscore the word public, a public plaza in downtown for people to enjoy. <laughs> No idea why you're laughing. <laughs> As you approach Paddock Plaza, uh, which was built for the bicentennial, this is the approach uh, to Paddock Plaza right now. Arguably not the friendliest approach uh, to a public park that you've ever seen. We're going to transform this section uh, from this to this, right? Uh, we're calling this the forecourt and the promenade to the top of the bluff. We're going to open up Paddock Park so you can see in and out of it, uh, which has been a problem in the past. And as you walk down toward the bluff, toward the back of this picture, uh, when, you, when you walk down that path right now, this is what you see. This is where civilization goes to die in downtown Fort Worth. <laughs> It is, it is defined by upheaved bricks and, and hard scrabble and rocks and sticks, and then it just drops off into the bluff. We are going to transform this. This is the top of the bluff. This is where the fort was built, right? This is where you have an unimpeded view, 80 feet above the river, a singularly unique place in Fort Worth. We are going to transform this environment from this to this. Yes. This is what we're calling the balcony. <clears throat> This is what we're calling the balcony. It'll be a new civic place with places for you know, people to plug in uh, electric equipment for speakers and things like that, to have receptions. It, it works with, with uh, uh, Heritage Plaza. It will be a new place, a place everybody can enjoy that unimpeded view of the West. Uh, and, and, and the remarkable West Texas sunsets that we get here, um, uh, unless you live on top of a hill or you live in a big condo, the, when you're driving down the street and you see that big West Texas sunset and then a tree gets in the way or a, a building gets in the way, you can't enjoy it, right? This is the place. This is a place in Fort Worth where everyone is going to be able to enjoy that remarkable West Texas sunset. And so we're really excited about that. You can see some sidewalks leading away from it. This is what we're going to do with the bluff. This elevated, winding, quarter-mile sidewalk is going to traverse that 80-foot um, topography uh, from the top of the balcony all the way down to the river. It'll be illuminated. It'll work at ADA grade, so if you're in a wheelchair, you can traverse it. It's going to be a, another remarkable place that people can enjoy um, downtown, the river, and, and access to, the, um, to Panther Island and, and to downtown. Uh, this is funded. And then at the bottom of the canopy walk are the river stairs, which will touch the road down below. Ultimately, we hope there will be a, um, there will be, um, a pedestrian bridge across the river to Panther Island. But this will be a place to watch the fireworks or to propose to your sweetie or to just have a wonderful time. It also works as an amphitheater. And at the very bottom of that path down the bluff is something that we're called, calling the landing, which is a, a lovely, graceful introduction to the bluff itself and the beginning of, of, of uh, a pedestrian's opportunity to go from uh, the river down below to actually traverse that 80-foot that bluff and, and use the dimensionality, the three-dimensionality of the, the verticality of the bluff as an amenity, as a feature of Fort Worth, Texas. When you put it all together, all of the pieces combine uh, to, to, to uh, form a scope of, of project that looks like this. And when you look at it from the air, from the other side of the river, this is what it's going to look like. This project right now is currently budgeted at $45 million, and we have raised $41 million so far. <laughs> So nobody leaves the room until we raise another four million. <laughs> we're actually we're, we're we're actually finishing the last phase of funding. We hope to raise fifteen million dollars between now and this time next year. We've met with Bell and Al, and we're meeting with a whole bunch of folks, uh, and and hope that that uh, our fundraising success will lead to the creation of a of a very generous. Um, uh, 
cushion against inflation on construction costs, but also a maintenance reserve that will keep downtown Fort Worth Inc. and the private sector at the table with the city uh, forever uh, and, and make sure that this is well maintained going forward. Plan 2033, mm, got two minutes, that whole Sundance question. Uh, <laughs> Plan 2033 is the next 10-year vision for downtown Fort Worth. Uh, I would commend you to read it. It's on our website at dfwi.org. It goes into a lot more detail about a lot more things, uh, and, and I hope that you will take a look at it and find a place for yourself in that plan. Uh, as, as I wrap up, I, I, I would just like to say that there is a lot going on in, in downtown Fort Worth, a, a record amount of going on. There's, we should be extraordinarily proud and should be singing the praises of all of the work that has been done over the years to create the center city that we have. And there's a little corner of downtown that is, uh, is a bit of a distraction right now. right? For reasons that have nothing to do with the market, nothing whatsoever to do with the market. Uh, this too shall pass. Right? It's not sustainable, and, and it's nothing that has any reflection on Fort Worth, Texas, and, and what our economy is capable of and, and, and what we have to offer to the world. It has absolutely nothing to do with any of that. So it's unfortunate that it is what it is. Uh, it is a cautionary tale about the importance of professional management uh, and response to the marketplace, uh, as opposed to um, acting independently of the marketplace. Uh, but it has nothing to do, nothing to do with us. So uh, th this will pass. The buildings are in decent shape. Um, the parking around it is good. The bones around it are good. And as soon as professional management returns to Sundance Square, Sundance Square will come roaring back and downtown and Fort Worth will be all the better for it. But in the meantime, all this stuff is going on and we've got plenty to say grace over and I thank you. Exciting, everyone. And note to self, do not walk out when Andy Taft is speaking. <laughs> Everybody take note. How exciting. You said 3.4 billion right. in development. Right. In the pipeline. In the pipeline, just in downtown. Yes. That is amazing. Thank you so much for everything you do and your team. I think we are so blessed, we're so gifted to have Andy, his team, and everything that's happening in downtown. Thank you so much. Thank it's you. proud, and our, we get to meet downtown as well. Thank you. Do I get this? You do. <laughs> we appreciate your time today and show our appreciation. Thank you, Andy. All right, folks. If you have any questions, you can find our speaker after our meeting. I'm sure he'd be happy to answer any questions. We have a couple of announcements, but first, we have a very special thank you. I want you all to join me in thanking our Fort Worth Club team, who takes care of us every single week. With smiles on their faces, the gold standard in service, They are an extended part of our Rotary family. Fridays would not be the same without each of you. Thank you all so much. Thank you. A few closing announcements. District Gala coming up. November 9th, Texas Motor Speedway. See Aurora for that. As you heard earlier, we have several upcoming opportunities that you can participate. Take a picture, scan the QR code, register and participate and bring your friends and family. There's something for everyone as we shared earlier. Here you are. Today we have an international committee meeting in the Rotary Office Suite, third floor, and next week a panel discussion on economic impact, prosperity, and the arts with our very own Rotarian Wesley Gentle leading the discussion, President of Arts Fort Worth. Thank you all for choosing to be here today. The meeting is adjourned. Have a great weekend.